Last summer, I traveled to the country of Belize in Central America. I spent about a week in its beautiful rainforests, photographing its flora and fauna. The problem was that the place was thick with mosquitoes. When I came home, I realized that some of my mosquito bites were not really healing. I also noticed that something was living in them. I had the human botfly. Botflies are interesting animals. We get them from mosquitoes, and the mosquitoes get them from a female botfly, who catches a mosquito, lays eggs on it, and then lets it go. When a mosquito bites you, the heat of your body causes the eggs to hatch, and then the tiny larvae drop onto your skin. The easiest way to remove a botfly is to use a suction venom extractor. Botflies are not particularly serious parasites, but they can occasionally be painful, mine was, and so I decided to remove it. This is not a nipple, but a warble, the place where the botfly larva lives in the skin. After a few minutes of suction, the larva was mostly out, and I pulled it out completely with tweezers. This larva was very tiny, but its body was already covered with spines that make pulling botflies out of the skin so difficult. In any case, the larva is out. End of story. Did I mention that I am an entomologist? Well, I had never seen an adult botfly, and so I decided to let the two remaining larvae in my skin live and mature. Also, I, I figured that being a male, this was my only chance to produce another living, breathing being out of my flesh and blood. It took two months for the larvae in my skin to reach the point where they were ready to emerge. The process took about 40 minutes. It was not particularly painful, in fact, I probably would have not noticed it if I had not been waiting for it, as the botfly larvae produce painkillers that make their presence as unnoticeable to the host as possible. After the larva came out, the hole in the skin healed completely within the next 48 hours. The mature botfly larva is an impressive looking animal, covered with big spines and sporting a pair of large fangs. The larva then drops to the ground and gets ready to enter the next phase of its life, the process of pupation. Within a few hours of leaving my body, the botfly larva turned into a pupa, or, or precisely, a puparium. The puparium is a non-moving, non-feeding stage of the fly's development. It has a pair of funny-looking tufts, which are called the frontal spiracles, and they allow the puparium to breathe on the ground. After a few days, the puparium turned black, and then nothing happened for about a month and a half. The adult botfly emerged in the middle of the night, and I found it sitting on the shell of its puparium. A botfly is slightly smaller than a honeybee, and has an iridescent blue abdomen and bright red eyes. It is a handsome animal and at this stage completely harmless to humans. Adult botflies don't have functional mouth parts and so they cannot bite or sting. This also means that they cannot feed and thus the adults live only for a few days. During that time they have to find a mate and then the female must catch a mosquito to lay her eggs on it. In desperation, they will also lay eggs on ticks, or even vegetation, hoping that the mammalian host will brush against them. And that's the story of my botfly.